The International Catholic Migration Commission, or ICMC, was founded in 1951 by Pope Pius XII. This was the time after World War II when there were many, many refugees and migrants uh, who had been displaced from their own countries or territories as a result of the war. And uh, Pope Pius XII started us so that we could work with the bishops' conferences uh, all over the world, as well as with religious orders and with other Catholic organizations that were involved in serving refugees and migrants. And he asked us to form a network of all those different groups and to help them, support them in the kind of work they were doing with refugees and migrants. And we've stayed faithful to that mission from the very beginning. And so while we started with a lot of the repatriation of uh, people who were displaced in Europe, uh, we later went on then to work with people, the, uh, the so-called boat people from Southeast Asia, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Laotians, who were fleeing the war in Southeast Asia at the time. We also were very active in the Balkans, uh, uh, with especially the Kosovo uh, refugees. And now much of our work is based in Middle East, um, as well as we still have programs for Afghan refugees in Pakistan. We have a very large program for uh, women and children who are, uh, had, uh, were victims of domestic and sexual violence. There are Rohingya refugees from uh, Myanmar uh, going into uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia. Uh, we still are helping to work with the, uh, many of the African refugees from all over Africa. Uh, and um, what we do for them is, uh, first of all, to make sure that the local church is responsive to their needs. and we try to help the local church do that. Uh, but then in addition, we have our own emergency aid programs. Uh, for instance, right now, we have a program of medical assistance and counseling uh, for uh, Syrians uh, inside Syria. These are people who have not gotten out, but they've been displaced within Syria. And so in the city of Damascus, where many of the hospitals and the clinics have closed down, we're able to provide uh, medical assistance for pregnant women and for newborn children to save their lives uh, and to be sure then that these children will have a future, hopefully a future in peace. Um, we also are involved in helping uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to review the cases of people who claim to be refugees. And, uh, and then after UNHCR uh, uh, certifies that they indeed are refugees because their lives were threatened in their own countries or because they were uh, victims of persecution in their home countries and have gone to another country, then we help UNHCR to determine what's the best future for these people. People, of course, working with the people themselves. Uh, could they stay in the country where they've sought some refuge? Or do they need to go to a third country, a resettlement country? In the cases of people who will go for resettlement, uh, we work very closely with uh, the United States government uh, to process uh, the applications for resettlement to the United States. Now that sounds very bureaucratic in some ways. It takes many, many long interviews with families. But at the same time, I think that we bring something unique to this because of our Catholic values and our Catholic inspiration. And that is to really focus on each and every refugee and on refugee families in general and to uh, uh, suffer with them in many ways, uh, hearing the pain and the, and the fear that, that they have gone through and trying then to give them hope. Um, we need to do extensive interviews with them. That's a very painful process, but we make sure that our staff is very, very sensitive to their needs. And also while they're waiting, sometimes for years in the country where they sought refuge before they could be resettled, then we try to help them with their many practical needs, uh, getting decent housing, uh, trying to uh, get counseling for them, trying to make sure they have the right kind of medical care, uh, even though in some of the countries they're not entitled to be part of the medical system uh, in those countries. Trying to help the children get education. If they can't go to the regular schools in the country where they've sought refuge, then to try to find some way, alternative way of keeping them educated and preparing them for the time when they will go to another country. 
Recently, I visited our office in Turkey, which is processing many of these refugees uh, for resettlement in the United States. And I sat in some of the interviews and heard the, the real suffering that the adults have gone through. Um, many of those people want very much to return, especially to Syria or for, to Iraq. Uh, but right now, it's not possible. So then trying to help them prepare for another life in another country. Uh, we then uh, do education with them, cultural orientation, so that they could um, find out what the country that they're going to is like, what are the values, what is the way of life there? What kinds of expectations will they have when they start to work there? Um, how sh they should relate to people who come from a very different culture, from different religious backgrounds, uh, and yet also find the ways to keep their own traditions and their own religion as well. I sat in with a group of children uh, who also were having cultural orientation, helping them to learn where they're going to, to live. And I found that each child had a map of the United States before him or her, and they were coloring the states. But the state where they were going to live was in a special color. And I heard some of the children tell me how much hope they had of a different life. These are children who watched some of their family members be bombed, be killed. Uh, these are children who had to run for their lives with their family, with their parents. They had to leave everything they had behind. Uh, and yet, you know, and I saw that suffering in their faces too, but then I also heard the voices of hope from those children. And I think it's really very, very important that the community of the world be open to receiving these refugees and welcoming them and helping them to integrate into their new home countries as well. I also think that they bring great gifts to wherever they're going to go, whether it be in Europe or in Latin America or in North America, that they bring a lot of gifts to us. They have different values, sometimes deeper values than we in the West have. They could teach us a great deal about keeping traditional family values. And, and also, uh, they could learn, help us learn uh, new ways of cooking, new ways of uh, culture, um, and also they contribute to the economies in the countries that they go to by working, sometimes accepting very basic jobs uh, and for low pay, uh, but by working hard because they want a new life and they want to prove that they will contribute to the country where they are living.